Hello, today we're here to talk about Bro Science, the animated series, or as it's known in Japan, Danbaru nan kilo motoru, which translates to how many kilos are the dumbbells that you lift. I first heard about this series from Jack's Blade on YouTube, who made a video called This Manga Will Make You Train More Than Dragon Ball Z. Since he recommended it so enthusiastically, I figured it would be worth checking out. So I took a look at the manga, and the more I got into it, the worse it seemed to get. And I figured I should really make a video at some point explaining all the issues with this series, all of the uh, bro science. But I put it off indefinitely, and then... Jack's Blade released another video titled, This New Anime Will Make You Train More Than Dragon Ball Z. And I figured if there's an anime coming out, then that would be the perfect time to release a video critiquing the series. But then my computer died. So I had to go through the process of... That's a rant for another time. Today, we're here to talk about bro science. Well, before we get to the bro science, I want to first address this idea behind the new workout anime genre and Jack Splade's claims that this will inspire you to work out. I don't think that a series about working out is going to be the best way to inspire you to work out because it feels kind of um, self-serving, I suppose. Like, working out just becomes this thing that these people do because that's what they do, and there isn't much more to it than that. And of course, they use the scantily clad girls to attract teenage boys to the series, so, you know, Insert a joke here about your wrist getting a workout. You're clearly more interested in entertaining horndog viewers than helping us succeed! I can see why people like Jack's Blade, who are already into fitness, might like this series, because it's about their interest. It's kind of like that time that I watched a series about Airsoft that turned out to be complete trash. But for normal people, it's just kind of weird, because you're watching somebody else's hobby. Jack's Blade compared Danbalu to um, Dragon Ball Z, which I think is a pretty good comparison because in Dragon Ball Z, there is a clear end goal. Not only that, but there is a clear connection drawn between the training that they do in the show and the results that they get from their training. Consider, for example, Goku's trip to Namek to fight Frieza. Along the way, he's training and doing some pretty stupid stuff, like punching with dumbbells and shooting himself with energy beams. But then he gets to Namek, and he's the only one who can fight Frieza in his later forms, and he eventually goes Super Saiyan. And this is all implied to be a result of his training, as well as getting really angry at Frieza. A series that I think is even better about this is Hajime no Ippo. It's a series about a boxer, so it's a guy who could exist in real life. He trains much more often than the characters in Dragon Ball Z, but it's always very clear that the reason that he's training is still to reach his goal of being a better boxer. He does do some weird stuff, like... At one point, he's doing one-arm push-ups in sets of 50, and his coach calls that low reps? Not on this planet. But at the end of the day, he is doing more realistic training than Dragon Ball Z, and he has more realistic goals, so he has that relatability factor on top of consistently working hard toward a clear goal. I think Dragon Ball Z has a hard time competing with that, and Don Balu, or something similar to it, can't really compete with either of them. Now, if this series had simply failed to inspire me, that wouldn't really be worth complaining about. Cosprayers failed to inspire me to do anything except stop watching it, but you don't hear me complaining about that. 
The real problem here is the bro science. For those of you who are new to gym culture, bro science is a term used in gyms to refer to superstitious beliefs about working out that are disguised as smart advice. Danmaru is filled with bro science. Some of it can injure you, some of it can scare you away from getting fit, and some of it can just waste your money, so let's get into it. I want to start with the title of the series because it sounds like something that we call ego lifting, which is when you focus on lifting heavier and heavier weights just to boost your ego, and you neglect safety and your original goals. The show doesn't directly endorse this kind of behavior, but they do cut corners in a similar fashion. The series itself starts with Hibiki, a yuppie-ish girl living in suburban Japan, who clearly has an eating disorder. The presentation in both the manga and the anime leaves no question about this, but strangely it's never properly addressed. She kind of gets the hint after her friend smack talks her a little bit about gaining weight, but then she says she's going to go on a diet, and that just kind of gets do it tomorrow syndrome. You know, like saying every day that she's going to do it tomorrow. Yesterday, you said tomorrow, so- Then you say it again the next day, and it never really gets done. It's very realistic because our food culture has been so heavily industrialized that people don't know what's good for them anymore, but this series is presenting itself as educational, so it should have stepped in here in some way. Then again, maybe it's for the best that it didn't because we see some of their advice about diet later on, and it's complete garbage. Hibiki tries a few other things before going to the gym. And they're kind of glossed over, the anime gives them a few seconds each, and the manga gives them each one panel. But I want to talk about them a little more, because they also establish these themes that are prevalent through the series. First, she tries jogging, a classic blunder. While jogging is a very popular health meme, the reality is that humans aren't born with the ability to do that. For somebody who's starting from a completely sedentary lifestyle, the length of time that we see Hibiki jogging in the anime might be as long as a real person would be able to jog, you know, before their stamina runs out, their muscles burn and get tight and they have trouble breathing. So you can't really start at that level. Some alternatives that you can use until you've adapted to the point where you can jog include walking, intermittent jogging, and slow jogging. Of course, there's still this saying that you can't outrun a bad diet. Next, Hibiki tries at-home strength training, and she makes the same mistake of trying something that's too hard for her level, push-ups directly off of the floor. Now, some people can do this on their first try, but most people can't, and Hibiki is at a disadvantage because of her 35% body fat level. So, what she should really do is try to ease her way in by doing something like a push-up off of a table or a chair. This alters the weight distribution so that the exercise is easier. You can find ways to do this for most of body weight exercises by searching online for progressions, like push-up progressions or pull-up progressions. Even at a disadvantage, you should be able to find a place where you can start. Be aware that there's a difference between quality progressions and cheating, like Hibiki's flared-out elbows here. Some things can make exercises easier while limiting the benefits or risking injury, but the series doesn't really mention that as far as I'm aware. If Hibiki had tried some of these suggestions, then maybe she wouldn't be blaming herself for not having enough motivation, and maybe she wouldn't have needed to spend a stupid amount of money on this over-the-top gym. Her failures made her the perfect marketing target. As Hibiki tours the gym, she meets Akimi, an embodiment of the student council president archetype who also has a huge muscle fetish. So that's mixing things up a little bit. Instead of just having a scantily clad girl that you can perv on, this is a scantily clad girl who might perv on you, except probably not. 
and I still hate anyone who thinks it's acceptable to behave this way. Hibiki also meets Machio, the personal trainer who has huge muscles, and she promptly gets a crush on him, otherwise she probably wouldn't have joined the gym. Now, there's one question that every personal trainer should ask their new clients before they get started, or their certification should be revoked. And that question is, what are your goals? Machio does not ask this question. He just goes, you're a bodybuilder now, you gotta do some bodybuilding. And Hibiki doesn't know any better, so she's just kind of quietly subsumed into the bodybuilder hive mind. I just want to lose some weight, not get swole. He starts her off with bench press, which wouldn't be my first choice, but it isn't really a problem. And he tells her to do three sets of ten, which is typical bodybuilder programming. That's not really a problem either, but then we see the problem when Hibiki can't actually complete ten bench presses in one set. Machio doesn't react to this at all, and at the end of three sets, he actually congratulates her for doing sets of seven, five, and three, because even that was more than he expected her to be able to complete. What a jerk! If he thought the 20 kilogram bar was going to be too much for her, then why didn't he give her two five kilogram dumbbells? You know, the things that the show is named after? They don't make a whole lot of appearances for some reason. And why does he start her out with the full volume? They say multiple times in this series that it's inevitable that you'll get sore your first time working out, but it's not. If you just ease into it, like, your, your body is always doing some kind of work, which means that it's adapted to some level of work, and there's some level of work that will not make you sore. So if you just do less work when you start intentionally working out, then you can avoid getting sore. Of course, the next day, Hibiki is so sore that she can barely move. In the next session, they work on squats. Now, squats are a lot more complicated than they seem, and you can kind of tell from the way that the manga and the anime constantly contradict each other on this. So, I'll try to link a decent guide to doing squats in the description. But for most newbies, I just recommend weighted step-ups instead. That way you can cut through all the confusion of the knees over toes and how deep do you need to squat and yada yada yada. Step-ups also avoid the problems of getting worn out from uh, overusing your cardiovascular system and central nervous system, and they don't make you as sore the next day, so you can still walk the next day. Episode 2 of the anime starts with a discussion of actual weight loss goals, which is nice. They did that earlier than the manga. After that, they do lat pulldowns, boring exercise, and they don't do anything horrible there. Then it turns into an advertisement for the supplement industry. They go on and on about timing and protein and branched chain amino acids, even though all of this stuff has been disproven by science, it doesn't work. And it especially doesn't work for losing weight. Hibiki is trying to lose weight, not build muscle. Then there's a pointless lecture about warm-ups and stretches. The numbers that they cite for decreased performance with stretching are tiny. You can see that. And your first set should be an adequate warm-up, so it amounts to bro science, despite citing actual science. Then we get to the much more interesting boxing gym scene, where Ayaka, uh, she explains dragon flags to Hibiki, and again she does the same, three sets of ten! And Hibiki points out that she can't do a single one. It, it's almost like they're self-aware, but not quite. Then they switch to planks, which are an inefficient exercise at best. Adding any kind of movement will improve them, even if you just do, like, a body saw. Then we get to the one part of the series that probably triggered me more than anything else. Hibiki is told to go punch a punching bag just to see what happens. She punches the bag, and she's not even using optimal form for maximum power. And yet, because Shonen hacks, she just blasts it right off of the chain. 
And again, this is somebody who can barely bench the bar. She is weak. I'm not saying that as an insult. I'm not saying that she should feel bad about being weak, but it just makes no biomechanical sense that she would be able to do anything like this. There are people who have been training their entire lives to be good at punching, and they don't punch like this. I'm also offended as a metallurgist. They're underestimating the strength of a steel chain. Of course, the, the bag would burst open and dump the sand everywhere before the chain broke. From a mechanical physics standpoint, if she can send the bag that far, then she should be flying in the other direction, because the bag probably weighs more than she does. But most of all, if the difference between being good at something and not being good at something is just what the author feels like writing, then why spend one second in a gym? Why bother trying at anything, ever, if all it really matters is something that you have no control over? That's, that's really why this ticks me off so much. It's denying the value of effort. And again, it's different here than it would be for just a normal shonen anime, because this show is presenting itself as educational. This is not educational. This is de-educational. It's making people more stupid. I would end it there with something like, the stupidity continues, but there's something else that I want to get to. So let's briefly cover episode three. Hardly anything interesting happens in episode three. They do have a lot of stupid advice about diet, and this actually triggered Jack's Blade. And he made a, a, well, not really a rant, more of a lecture about diet. And I don't completely agree with him, but I agree with him enough that I'm going to just link to his lecture rather than getting into this myself. Episode 4 starts with overcrowding in the gym, which is like... Maybe it's just me, but if you need that equipment to do anything, there's a problem. Then they get into the Resistance-type Holy Wars, which is unfortunately a very real thing. People will go to war with each other over whether it's better to use free weights or machines. It's kind of lame. I mean, as a member of the Bodyweight tribe, I am above such petty squabbles. But jokes aside, the differences between the different Resistance types aren't consistent. So it doesn't matter what the resistance type is, it matters what the specific exercise is. So if you see people doing this, just don't worry about it. After that, they end up not having access to the gym at all. So they watch a DVD of an absolute creeper explaining some basic bodyweight exercises, but they skip over all that, I guess, because of reasons? And they go to dips. And I can understand Ayaka and Akimi being comfortable with dips and doing them all the time, even. But they depict Hibiki doing dips and having an easy time with, again, three sets of ten, which is flat out wrong. Unless there's some huge time skip that's meant to be implied here. It's been maybe four months since she did her first bench press, based on the manga to be generous. And that is not enough time to be able to do dips. A dip is basically a push-up with your arms supporting all of your body weight, not just the front of your body. And this is more typical bodybuilder mentality, thinking that any exercise should be easy until you add lots of weight to it. But many body weight exercises, like dips, are difficult just because of the leverage involved and the weight of your own body. This is especially problematic with dips, because if you don't use good form, which they didn't even explain, then you can seriously injure your shoulders, so you really need to ensure that you have adequate strength before you start doing this exercise. So I'm just going to leave it there. Um, this video has gone way beyond its intended length. And you get the idea. It's this whole show made by people who think they understand exercise because they've been doing it for a long time, but they really have no idea what they're doing. Yeah, hopefully I will be able to clarify a few of the points that I made in later videos, but for now I just want to 
get this over with. It's been going on too long. 